when I go out for a ride because that's kind of my stress relief. Well, good morning, everybody. This is Cruise Man, and as you can see, things are starting to open up a little more here in Carrollton, Texas. It's another beautiful day in Carrollton. It's about 8.20, and it is 82 degrees already, so you can tell summer's coming. It'll probably be a high of a 90 today. I'm just now leaving Awake, which is the restaurant where I had uh, coffee this morning. The Einsteins next door. Oh, we're going through the twisties. This is these are the twisties in Carrollton right here. Yeah, and then we got this. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And then we got these long sweepers. See, like this. You don't know what you're missing. This is this is real riding. So anyway, another beautiful day here in Carrollton, Texas. We have had just probably the best spring weather I can remember in a long time. Uh, it never really gets much over 90 degrees. Now, I, I know in a couple of weeks I'll be regretting saying that because I know it's going to start getting up in the 100 degree range. But for now, it's been very nice. So I have a couple of announcements. First, I uh, want to thank all of you who have subscribed to my YouTube channel. Uh, we now have 23,000 subscribers, or just over 23,000. So thank you, everybody. Appreciate that. I want to also give you my test results uh, from my uh, lab test the other day on my last motor vlog. I was just leaving LabCorp where they did a blood test. And the test came back negative. So I do not have any COVID-19 antibodies. But there is a caveat. This lab test came with a full series of disclaimers that the test may not be accurate. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, who knows? They, you know, at one point they say it's negative, but then they say, but you can't really trust this test because we don't know if it works or not, basically. Anyway, for now, I guess I'll just have to assume I did not have COVID-19, which all that tells me is the regular flu will really kick your ass if you're not careful because it was a bad one. Put my shield down a little bit. You know, I keep asking myself during this shutdown when I go out for a ride because that's kind of my stress relief. You know, for me, I get sick of just sitting around the house and I mean, I work on a lot of videos and I'm doing a lot of reviews and stuff like that, but I like to just get out and ride. You know, even if it's just around town, I know that there's nothing, there's no scenery right around here, but at least you're just out riding. It's better than sitting at home. And I keep wondering, what, what do the rest of the people do that don't have a motorcycle, that don't enjoy riding a motorcycle? What are they doing? I guess they're out walking. I've noticed a lot of people in my neighborhood out walking, not so much riding bicycles, but I have seen a lot of people out walking. And I'm not sure why, but for some reason, people insist on walking right in the middle of the street. And we've got these big, beautiful, wide sidewalks where I live. So they could very easily be walking on the sidewalk, but instead they insist on walking. I mean, you have to swerve to not hit them, even on a motorcycle, much less a car. They just walk right down the middle of the damn street. I don't get that. What is that all about? I got a really nice long email this week from Roy. 
he'll know who he is. And he mentioned that uh, he'd been considering a 2018 Goldwing. And I think he's kind of comparing it between uh, one of the BMWs or a couple of the BMWs. And his biggest concern, and it may be a concern for a lot of you, I don't know. His biggest concern was the 5.5-gallon uh, fuel tank. And that the range of the Goldwing is not as good as that of a BMW or like a K1600 which is probably true I mean I've seen some uh, YouTube videos where they compare the two and you know the guy on the gold wings always having to stop for gas so I think Honda when they designed this motorcycle they were focusing on weight they wanted to keep the weight of the bike down because they wanted to improve the fuel mileage and they did certainly they did that in fact right now I'm showing 43.9 miles to the gallon and I'm just doing around town driving I never got 43.9 miles to the gallon on my 2012 not around town I did on the highway but not around town so I think what Honda was thinking they were thinking of this bike more as a light touring bike with more of an emphasis on commuting and almost like a uh, large sport touring bike rather than a long distance touring bike. Now for someone like me, it's not a big deal. And that's why I really haven't mentioned the fuel tank much in my previous videos because it, I, never, I never considered it a deal killer for me because I can't really stand to ride more than two hours anyway until I have to get off and stretch my legs because of my back and my legs. So for me, you know, 200 mile range is more than enough. But for some of you guys out there that are iron butt riders and you know, you do six, 700 miles a day when you tour, uh, I can see where uh, a smaller fuel tank could be an issue. This is how they drive here. Look at that. They just cut right in front of you. They switch lanes. This is that fast and furious crap. They come up right behind you, then switch lanes. So, let me know in the comments down below if the uh, smaller fuel tank is a deterrent for you buying, I have to switch lanes because this lane's closed up ahead. If that smaller fuel tank is a deterrent for you buying a new model Goldwing, or if you own a new model Goldwing, was that something you seriously considered and was almost a deal killer for you? I mean, it doesn't, like I say, it's not a big deal to me, but it is to a lot of people. I will say that, and I've said this before, this particular Goldwing model does not have the long distance touring chops that the previous Goldwing had, like my 2012. The 2012 was more comfortable from the standpoint of the seat, the factory seat was probably the most comfortable factory seat I've ever had. It was really pretty good. The bike on the highway, the 2012 Goldwing, was just, you know, solid as a rock, stable. It had much more storage capacity. So from the standpoint of a long distance touring machine, I think the previous generation Goldwing is probably the best long distance touring bike ever made. Now for me, this bike's fine. I can put everything for me personally traveling, if I'm traveling by myself, I can put everything in this bike that I need to get to uh, West Texas or if I'm going away for a few days. In fact, I'll be taking a trip the first week of June uh, to Midland and I'll be motor vlogging on that trip. And before I go, I'm gonna show you how I pack this bike. I put everything I need for uh, 
I'll probably be gone four or five days. So I'll put everything I need for four or five days in this bike without a bag in the back seat. And I'll just show you how I pack it. And I take my laptop. I take a lot of stuff. I mean, for me. So watch for that video coming up in June. I'm still working on my Cena first impression video of the Cena 50S. I've been using it now for about a week, week and a half. I'm using it right now, as a matter of fact. And we'll be giving you kind of an unboxing and a little bit of a first impression video on that new model. So I hope to have that ready for you in just a few days. And then uh, maybe a full review coming up soon. I'm still waiting on another, either a 50S or a 50R, so that I can test out the mesh uh, communication intercom capabilities of this new Mesh 2.0. Oh great, they got the sprinklers going, so now I get to wash the bike again. So this is my neighborhood and you can see people out walking and we got these big beautiful sidewalks on both sides and they were actually on the sidewalk and I've actually come down this neighborhood at like 5.30 in the morning when it's pitch black outside and there'll be a guy walking in the middle of the lane of the street dressed like this lady over here all black so you can't see her or see him and uh, that's happened to me more than once. I've almost hit a couple of people walking. Uh, today, everybody's on the sidewalks, it looks like. So I guess I have to eat my words. So my next uh, road trip will be to go to West Texas. Not really an exciting ride. Uh, there aren't any really good roads. Uh, going to West Texas is pretty much an interstate. So it's just flat, straight, boring roads. Hopefully it won't be too broiling hot by then. Usually early June, it starts getting pretty hot. Uh, I will leave early in the morning so it's a little cooler. I usually try to get in by around noon. And uh, I will, like I said, I'll be motor vlogging from the road. And I'm going to also be doing a video this week on how to create a route using the trip planner that's built into this uh, Zumo XT. It's very, very cool the way they did it. And I will be creating the route that I use to go to Midland using this uh, built-in trip planner. I usually use Basecamp, but I thought just as uh, an example to show you how it works, because you can create custom routes right within the unit so I'm going to show you how I do that and uh, you can see that video coming up sometime later this week or next week so thanks for joining me today I'm almost back home and I will see you on the next cruise man's motor vlogs If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.